day 11 here and that includes our second coat of waterproofing down to finalize this layer of the system so let's have a look at it and we're going to start with the shower here you can see not much has changed actually from yesterday uh, that's because this was already done um, so blue was on the wall we've just got more blue now but there are some telltale signs there if you know what to look for now one of the favorite things i like to see is this right here I'll try and hold this real still so you can see and if you look closely what you're actually seeing is this grid type pattern and what these are are roller streaks right now with any liquid applied system the best way you can apply it is by changing directions from the direction you rolled um, when you did the first coat and when you did the second coat and the reason that you want to do that is that there might be little bumps or little little things going on there that cause you to not get ideal coverage in a certain direction so if you change that direction as you can see here with our cross hatch pattern then that's just really good practice to make sure you get perfect coverage over you know small uh, issues with your substrate so that's how we know our second coat's been gone down there that's that's really good um, there was a couple of minor things where we had here yesterday where you could see the sealant through the membrane that's been fixed up with the the second coat here our detail on our, on our shower penetration here was a little bit light the first time that's been fixed up now so they're well sealed same with our mixer here that had the tape on it yesterday so that's been detailed then pulled off today you can see we've got a nice solid connection onto the mixer body there make our way around again you can see not too much has changed here i can tell you that the detailing on all of these look really good now let's get in close on that one and see so that's looking great um, that's about it for our walls oh, again over here you can see our cross hatch pattern on this wall here so that's really good to see all the way along here now of equal interest is our floor area here so you'll notice this looks actually a little bit different to yesterday and if we go in close here you can see why this is now you'll remember we discussed that the polyurethane membranes on the floor and any sort of overlay doesn't really like sticking to it that much when it has that slick rubbery surface so what the waterproof has done here after they've achieved their their membrane thickness is have an additional coat where you broadcast sand into it and that's commonly called a tie coat or a bonding coat and what it is it gives this a really rough really rough texture there so that when we come along with the screed and that's what's planned for tomorrow you can uh, get a really solid bond to it it's called a mechanic or key um, something applied to a rough surface is going to be able to grip it better so when you put your slurry coat down here for your screed that's going to get that really good bond with it now one thing which we didn't talk about previously and i'll take the opportunity to talk about it now is that we have put our membrane down on a dead flat surface here have a quick look at this penetration here while we're talking so this floor because it's laid on fc sheets laid on joists and bearers is dead flat very difficult to get a fall in it so the thing is that while this is a really nice neat looking job here this is actually just the backup waterproofing system so especially in the shower area we're going to get a a nice fall in the screed that goes over the top which comes in next and in that fall we're going to put another waterproofing membrane on top of that and that's going to be our primary membrane so it's going to be doing all the work hopefully it it never fails and water just sheds nicely to that drain but if it does um, we do have this backup containment polyurethane membrane underneath our screed here so that's known as an under and over system there are pros and cons to doing it this way a lot of people do like it just for that extra bit of backup peace of mind even though if it does get past that first layer it's probably just going to be trapped uh, in that flat area still much better than having it leak down into your um, structure below and damaging it like what happened with uh, this bathroom previously and having that deterioration of the timber so 
that's pretty much everything for today. And very soon we're going to have a screed in here. So we'll come back tomorrow and have a look at that then.